Your Excellency, Vice President Alupo, Honorable Minister Barrio Monse, UCC Executive Director Nyombe Tembo, and ITU Development Bureau Director Zava Zava, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a great delight and a pleasure to be with you all here this morning. I want to start by thanking Uganda for hosting this year's Global Symposium for Regulators, the GSR, in the heart of the Pearl of Africa. We are delighted to have the GSR return to Africa for the second year in a row. Madam Vice President, Africans are taking full ownership of their digital future. African ICT and communication ministers just endorsed the landmark, landmark continental artificial intelligence strategy and African digital compact. Uganda, our host, has embarked on an ambitious digital transformation roadmap which helps to build the road towards the country's vision 2040 and advance progress that has been achieved over the past 20 years by the Universal Access and Service Fund. Let me congratulate the Ugandan Communications Commission, as Dr. Zavazava has just done, on its silver jubilee. UCC's journey takes us back to the turn of the century, to November 2000, our first global symposium for regulators that was held in Geneva. And Uganda was there. It was the executive director of UCC at the time, Patrick Masambo, who's here with us in the room. The landscape back then was very different from what we see today. Less than half the world actually had a regulatory body. Convergence was on everyone's mind, but a different kind of convergence. We were talking about, about telcos, about cable TV, about broadcasting, and regulators were very focused on opening their markets to competition and looking at private investment. Only 7% of the population was online back then. Dial-up internet was still prevalent. We used our mobile phones for things like text and just basic phone calls. There were about a thousand satellites orbiting Earth, a number that has grown tenfold since then. And of course, artificial intelligence was sort of science fiction still in its infancy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the only certainty facing regulators and policymakers is change. Since the last GSR held in Egypt just one year ago, the pace of change has accelerated. It raises critical questions like, will deep fakes and disinformation erode trust in digital, in our institutions, and in democracy, especially during the biggest global election year in history? What will the world of work look like when the IMF has just reported that AI will affect almost 40% of jobs in the world? And who will be able to protect themselves from increasing cyber attacks? According to the World Economic Forum, the cybersecurity economy has grown four times faster, four times faster than the world economy. And how will we harness space? And it's been estimated that the global space economy will be worth 1.8 trillion US dollars by 2035. And will our industry meet its responsibilities when a UNDP global survey has just revealed truly astonishing consensus for stronger climate action? Stronger climate action as we're getting dangerously close to the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit. Just last Friday, the UN Secretary General unveiled the Sustainable Development Goals Report for 2024. 
He shared his disappointment that only 17%, 17% of the SDGs are on track. And of course, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to meet those targets by 2030. He called for action. He called for urgent action on the digital transition. And this means that you, the regulators, the policymakers, and the stakeholders that are gathered here have a responsibility to act. So today we ask, has our response been fast enough? I think the answer is sometimes. AI is one of those areas where much remains to be done. Has our response been uniform? Not always. But we're seeing common underlying principles start to take shape on approaches and tools like capacity development and standards. Has our response been consistent across the globe? Not yet. Countries are at different stages in their digital journey. Yet the pace of innovation continues unabated. As I heard yesterday at the Regulators Executive Roundtable, there is no pause button. We need to move quickly in all the areas that are central to our discussions in this year's symposium. Let me give you three examples. The first is artificial intelligence. Governments have been racing to establish protections around the development, the deployment, and the use of AI since our last gathering. But the reality is that much of the world is still contemplating what to do. A staggering 85% of ITU member states have indicated that they have not started putting in place policies or regulations in the space of AI. And despite this, they have all expressed a keen desire to learn from others. And that's really the essence of the GSR. And I hope that we can use this opportunity this week to really explore how regulators, how policymakers can effectively address the challenges and the risks brought by AI, putting inclusion, putting trust, safety, and sustainability at the core of our efforts. So the second example is space. Only 14 nations back when we first gathered in 2000, only 14 nations actually were spacefaring nations back then. And today, we have over 90 countries, 90 countries that have reached orbit. 2023 marked a historic record in terms of the number of satellite launches. And we see more and more country, countries interested in becoming spacefaring nations. We see more and more companies competing in this space. And of course, that also puts a bit of pressure on the orbit, on orbital slots, as well as spectrum resources. More diverse and more interesting use cases are being seen from connecting unreached communities to better understanding climate, including disaster protection and early warnings. Yet space governance continues to be centered around the nation state. Like AI and the other topics on our agenda here in Kampala, space is putting regulatory paradigms to the test. This GSR, again, is an incredibly unique opportunity for us to look into our toolbox and let's reimagine the future of space and other emerging technologies using those tools in our toolbox. And that brings me to the third example, and that's international cooperation. We need to build bridges, and that's what the UN Secretary General said to us when he joined us for the ITU governing body, the ITU Council, just three weeks ago. And for me, that building bridges means closing the gap, closing that digital divide and bringing those 2.6 billion people that have never ever connected online. It also means creating a policy and regulatory environment that fosters innovation, trust, social welfare, 
the very essence of those GSR best practice guidelines that were adopted yesterday. And it also means rallying, rallying around a common vision for our digital future in the lead up to the Global Digital Compact and the, and the September UN Summit of the Future. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to chart the course of transfor transformative technologies for positive impact. And we've been here before. 20 years ago, the internet was met with a similar mix of surprise, excitement, a little bit of fear. But I think it's fair to say that going forward, our path is clear. We need to make the race to regulation a race to the top, not a race to the bottom. We need to engage all stakeholders in the regulatory process, ensuring that everyone's voice is heard. We need to build interoperability and interconnectivity, not fragmentation and inequalities. And we have the power and we have the duty to strike the right balance between the benefits and the risks of these technologies without stifling innovation before it's too late. Let us rescue the SDGs and promote sustainability in all its dimensions, economic, social, and environmental. Let's make this digital experience inclusive, affordable, and safe, and let's make it meaningful for all. Thank you very much.